recently a couple of friends of mine were DJing at a club here in Chicago. They asked if I could swing by, take a couple of photos and videos. Little did I realize this was going to push my GH6 to the absolute limit. So the GH6 is claimed to be a lot better, or at least a little bit better in low light compared to previous generations. You've got 2D, 3D, 4D, 8D, noise reduction, whatever they call it. And they're really attempting to process the noise better in terms of software. I'm not sure if there's anything hardware being done with the DR Boost to this footage, but I think a lot of it is software based noise reduction which nothing wrong with that. If the results are good, you know, we'll let them speak for themselves. So you might be wondering, you know, if you know the channel, you know, I've got an S5, we're shooting on it right now, which of course, wouldn't that be a lot better in low light? Well, there's two things that was holding me back. Um, one was lens selection. Um, I've really only got the 24 to 70 f 2.8. And even with a better low light sensor, I wondered if, you know, the slower aperture would sort of counteract the advantage in low light it, you know, had. If I had a couple of 1.8 primes for this, which I probably should get eventually, would this have performed better than the GH6? Yes, definitely. But there was another thing holding me back, which was this video was kind of determined to go on both YouTube, you know, 16 by 9, and on TikTok and Instagram, so 9 by 16. And the GH6 has a perfect mode for that, which is a, the anamorphic 4x3 modes. And it's got a 5.8K, you know, full frame 4x3 mode, and a 4.4K 60 FPS mode, which I could use for some slow motion shots. And I shot a little bit of both of that. So quickly, before we get into the video, I want to go over some settings. So GH6, 12,800 ISO for like all of it. Um, we were doing 5.8K open gate at, you know, 24 frames a second. So either between 25 and 50 shutter speed and went down to 25 for exposure every once in a while. And then sometimes I would go to 4.4K, 60, and that would be usually 60 shutter speed. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these shots in the final video. We'll uh, probably skip the first shot because it's a little bit provocative. Okay, so this shot right here is definitely a 4K60 shot, 4.4K60 shot, because you can see it's in slow motion. Um, this has definitely had noise reduction applied to it, but I'm just going to say it flat out, guys, this entire video is like 12,800 ISO and at 1.7 and it was underexposed, if anything, for almost all these shots. It's been boosted even a little bit past. Um, so I don't know if it's a full stop boosted, maybe a half a stop up. So, you know, we're, we're past 12,800 12, ISO in real numbers. But as you can see, Neat Video did a pretty good job. And this is kind of a abstract shot anyway of the crowd. So this, so this is definitely a 5.8K shot, 24 frames a second, probably... 50 or even lower shutter. And we've got noise reduction on this one again, which is kind of the thing here. If you're shooting past 6400, you're gonna wanna put some noise reduction on this in post. It is what it is. The noise reduction in the camera, the technology just, it's not quite there. So this shot looks really good. This 
is a good example of a shot that is definitely at 12,800 and not noise reduced. So you can see here, maybe on YouTube even at 4K, you might not be able to tell, but these shots are pretty noisy. This shot is just an action shot, pretty noisy. Same shot again, this is, and then yeah. As you can see, all these shots without the noise reduction are pretty noisy, but the noise reduction shots in post look pretty good, like this one. Yeah, that noise pattern here is pretty rough, especially because of the mixed lighting, the colored lighting. It's pretty tough to make that look really, really good. But again, with YouTube compression, and especially with Instagram and TikTok compression, it's gonna, it's all gonna go. It's actually might even make it the bit rate a little bit better. Here again, you can see when it's well exposed, actually, it's not that bad, but when you pause it and zoom in, and you know, the motion really helps it. This again, 12,800 shot. And this one's actually not bad because we've got some lights from these lights and from this sparkler here. Um, and this shot actually looks, doesn't look too bad either for 12,800, no noise reduction. Um, not bad, not bad. The tip here really is finding those reflections, using the light that you can find, <laughs> and uh, figuring that out. This is on the Laowa 7.5. I wanted to get at least a few of these really wide shots of the venue. And yeah, it worked out really well. Slightly slower lens at f2 but the stabilization held up pretty well. And yeah, the lights were going off here quite a bit. So yeah, you can see when it's really dark, it's really underexposing. You can't underexpose with this camera, which I didn't have a choice. I was maxed out at 12,800, but if you can get a proper exposure at 6,400 or higher, it's gonna still look pretty acceptable depending on your final use casage. And this, okay, this is clearly a 4.4K shot, the 60 FPS and 60 FPS in general, in the, this footage, I've noticed is a lot worse. Every time you use something like, you know, the pixel to pixel mode or the 4.4K mode that has a crop in it, or like the 4K60 on the full frame cameras, the S5, your noise performance is gonna be worse. Um, I think it's two things. One, you your shutter needs to be a little higher. Um, I was probably rocking, you know, 1 60th of a shutter, to be honest, on some of these shots, just to get more light coming in, but you know, I can run 1 25th of a second at 24 frames a second and still get decent results. The other thing is when you're cropping in, the noise is getting cropped as well. So you get bigger, you know, dots of noise, more artifacts and things like that. But it still doesn't look too bad though because she had this light up umbrella and yeah, not bad. Um, this next shot of like the rope stuff, um, definitely noise reduction on this. And with all the movement that was happening and the noise reduction, I'm surprised at how good this shot ended up looking. Um, the noise was pretty rough, um, but yeah, it still didn't look bad. And then, you know, more noisy shots, but you can see, again, look at the background with the lights sliding up, almost no noise. It's really just when you get the shadows where that noise comes out, um, even at like 12,800. But again, fun video, people having a good time. The content, the lighting, the authenticity is more important than any like literal, um, you know, technical specs of stuff like this. If I did this again, would I be the guy who set up a light and put it on top of my camera and, you know, lit things up occasionally? Um, probably I might use my aperture light from a previous video, check it out here just to get you know, not just like a pure white light in people's faces, maybe add some color in there. But, um, you know, you live and you learn. This was a kind of last minute deal. And uh, I think it turned out pretty well for what it is. Yeah, you can see these girls lit up. Looks pretty good, even at 12,800, for sure. Um, Just going through these last couple shots and yeah, this again, oh, here's a good example of a DJ shot that wasn't noise reduced. And yeah, we're losing out on some details. It's pretty noisy, but you know, you can tell what's happening. It's a decent exposure and it's a good looking image. You know, the colors, I think one big takeaway I'm coming away with here is that the colors 
are holding up pretty well, you know. Um, that's one reason I use Vlog over some other profiles is I found that some standard profiles or Cine D or things like that, they just mess with the colors or they don't have the information to correct the colors here, you know. So in this situation, the reds look red, the blues look blues, the, the separation of those colors is good, you know. And I think those really LED high intensity colors in low light with high SOs is what tends to break footage sometimes, especially these intense blues sometimes can really get you. And yes, it's breaking a tiny bit sometimes, but and that might be a 4.2.0 thing as well, as opposed to 4.2.2 like other modes. But generally I'm, the noise is not that great. The, it's pretty noisy, but for me, um, the color holding up as well as it does and there's still being a good amount of detail in these shots. Yeah, the GH5S might look better aesthetically, but honestly, the detail and colors at high ISOs are better on the GH6. So it's really what irks you more, you know? Do you prefer co correcting for that softness and that color shift in like the GH5S? Or do you prefer correcting for like some noise reduction stuff on like the GH6? And yeah, we just have one more shot of the crowd. You can see again, when it's dark, we got noise, but when it's bright, you know, I, you would be hard pressed to tell what ISO a bright image was shot at, even at high ISOs, you know. You could pixel peep and tell, but yeah, generally, not bad. So what are some of my thoughts here? Yeah, I talked about it a little bit as we went, but the GH6, the noise was sold as one of the selling features and it was one of the features I was excited about as someone who does music and concerts and weddings, you know, where the receptions are really dark. And generally the GH6 is better than the GH5 for sure, but it falls behind its full frame counterparts with equivalent apertures and things like that, definitely. But at the end of the day, the 4x3 mode for the social media edits and the frame rates and the resolution are why I chose this camera over the S5. Um, Maybe if I get another one of these gigs, I can take the S5 out and we can do a some, you know, more direct comparisons of low light. Or maybe I'll test them in like a lab setting or something like that. But yeah, I think the GH6 is okay for low light. It's not as good as a full frame camera. GH5S I think is going to have better noise performance. But I, I am surprised at how well it held on to some of those colors and some of those details for sure. I think it was a good balance where they didn't push the noise reduction too far. But again, this is only in vlog, you know, this could be different in the natural or standard profiles. I just like vlog to retain those colors and have the maximum flexibility, use the LUTs I like to use. But I can definitely see the value of just getting it really right in camera with, you know, standard or natural or rec 709 or something like that. So actually, let me guys, you can tell me down below what kind of profile would you use for this situation? Um, or what camera, you know, maybe the GH5S would have been better, or maybe I should have used my S5 with my 24 to 70 lens, but, but at the end of the day, you know, this is a fun experiment. Um, I pushed this camera to the absolute furthest limit and uh, it went, it didn't go too bad. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. We're going to do more GH6 content soon. We're going to do some GH6 myth busting. Maybe look at the ISO um, a little bit more scientifically and see what we can see. But until then, thanks for stopping by, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video.